Alrighty guys, it is Quaman here today, and in today's video we're going to talk about Broly. And of course, as you guys know, Toriyama is confirmed for Dragon Ball Super in 2023, in addition to two major manga animators, and if you want to check out and find more details on that, you can go back and find one of my more recent videos where I talked about that news. But, in today's video, we're going to talk more specifically about Broly and going past the end of Dragon Ball Z. Now, if I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, I'm kind of mixed on this. And I really want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below today. Because I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels mixed on this. Because, if you look at Broly's history, right? I mean, technically it's kind of weird to classify Broly as a villain because he's more of like a rage monster that becomes a villain when he's super angry and loses control that's controlled by his father Paragus. Even if you go back to the original Broly, this is going to be a hot take, but I've never felt that the, even the original Broly was a villain. I mean, he's he's a villain by default because he's fighting against the main characters, but when you think about his goals and ambitions, he's just an innocent dude that just goes crazy when he gets mad. Because even if you look at the original Broly and you see him in the scenes where he wasn't a legendary Super Saiyan and he was just in his base form, he's a calm guy. He's pretty much normal. When he was under control and when Paragus, you know, had that machine work on him, Broly was completely normal. It's just the Saiyan transformation that made him lose his stuff. So... You know, when when you translate the fact that Broly was like a villain slash, you know, guy that lost his stuff, and you know what word I want to say when I say stuff, but because of the YouTube mon demonetization bots, I can't say that word that I would normally want to say. You know, when we see him in Dragon Ball Super, it's basically the same story, except that Frieza's the bigger part of the picture that's essentially using Broly. And where I'm going with all of this is basically how is Broly going to be used in the upcoming Dragon Ball Super anime. Because here's the thing, guys. In a weird way, I'm kind of against it because I feel like having Broly as an ally is too overpowered. I feel like if you're going to have Broly as a good guy, when you already have Goku, who's really strong, and Vegeta, who's really strong... And Piccolo, who's now very strong, and Gohan, who's now a lot stronger because of Rage... I'm not Rage Gohan, but Gohan White, Gohan Blanco, you know, Gohan Beast, whatever you want to call him. And then, obviously, Orange Piccolo and Orange Piccolo 2, which is so cringy to say. But when, when you factor in all these newer transformations and Goku and Vegeta mastering Ultra Instinct and Ultra Ego more, and then you, when you factor in Broly's a legendary Super Saiyan who could also, you know expand his abilities by learning how to be more controlled as we saw with Kale. Once Kale figured out how to control her abilities, she became significantly better as a fighter when she was fighting alongside Caulifla. And eventually she fused into, you know, Kefla. Now obviously in the manga there was a bit of a difference because she kind of fused by force in the manga when she was going crazy. But basically it's the same general concept. With all of this said, I feel like having Broly as a good guy is just too strong. I think that Universe 7 will have like a team that's just way too powerful and you're gonna have to have Extremely powerful opposition in order to really make sense out of having so many strong characters now Unless you just do like power scaling upwards where like basically Goku and Vegeta are still the only two people that can compete against the strongest guys and Gohan Broly and Piccolo just basically fall aside all over again which I feel would kind of not make sense because you gave Gohan and Piccolo an entire movie to boost them up in power all just for the next villain to make them look so incredibly weak all over again the only way that I can see all of this working guys is if we have a situation where we have kind of like a gang like multiple villains that come up in like the upcoming arc that will essentially cause our characters to work together as a group because if we're going to go through that same traditional dragon ball formula of like you know goku and vegeta are the only two people that get to fight against the main characters because everybody else is basically a flea compared to everybody else well then that formula probably will not work anymore because we kind of already saw that in resurrection of f we're like you had a situation where, you know, Goku and Vegeta were the only two people that could fight Frieza, and Gohan did not go Gohan Beast, he was totally out of it and got wrecked. And the question would be, well, if Gohan 
was as strong as he was at that point and could at least hold off Frieza until Goku and Vegeta return, that would have been a different situation. But considering the fact that, you know, going back to that old formula would be so detrimental to Dragon Ball when you already improved the quality of your characters by making Gohan and Piccolo stronger, it just wouldn't make sense. So, basically, what I'm getting at here is that the upcoming arc of Dragon Ball is going to really have to have much stronger villains. And this is kind of a general problem that Dragon Ball has had, where you're kind of getting to the point where it's getting harder to have characters that get stronger. Because, I mean, Goku and Vegeta are already, like, training with gods, and they competed in the Tournament of Power, and then they found Broly, and now Frieza's Black Frieza, so he's even stronger. And then there's Moro, and then there's Granola, and then there's Gas, and then Elik who is controlling Gas. So you kind of get to this situation where it's like, how much stronger can you make the next villain to compete with our characters? Or will you some point, at some point get into a situation where you're going to have to use the gods to fight against the mortals or have like a Zamasu type arc where like you have a god of destruction that goes rogue or something like that. Or Zeno goes rogue even though that wouldn't make any sense because there's no possible way to fight Zeno because obviously, you know, Zeno can just erase people. So there's there's no fighting Zeno. He just, you just erase him from existence basically. There's nothing to say there. But I mean, that does go back to that old traditional, you know, Dragon Ball theory that we had years ago about the evil angels. I mean, obviously, that theory got debunked, but at that time, that evil angel theory made a whole lot of sense. I mean, let's be honest, guys, the way that we were looking at the Tournament of Power and the way that the Grand Priest seemed to be rejoicing over people getting erased, and, you know, there was one of those angels whose name I forgot, but somebody's gonna remind me in the comment section below. I think his name was Mojito. I think his name actually was Mojito, and I think there's the one that looks like Harley Quinn. Makarita. Makarita and uh, Mojito. It's funny, I said I wouldn't remember the names, but I remember their names. I made too many videos on Dragon Ball, guys. But, <laughs> but going back, though, guys, you know, if you remember how those characters it were interacting, it, it was just so clear that, like, it seemed like they might have, like, a side story with the evil angels, and at some point, it's kind of like, well, can't you have a plot now where the angels go rogue again? You know, because angels are supposed to be neutral, but if they want to have full control and, you know, I don't know if they somehow miraculously find a way to suppress Zeno or there's like some secret theory that really the Grand Priest is basically the god of the universe and Zeno is basically just like a an enforcer puppet that was created by the Grand Priest so that we can think Zeno's truly the god of everything when in fact it's the neutral one who is, you know, the Grand Priest himself. You know, that could be... A plot that I'm still interested in seeing, but ultimately though, I gotta admit to you guys, seeing Broly being an ally just is gonna be so awkward. It's just gonna be so weird having him around as a main character, guys. Out of all characters that you could have made main characters, he's like the one that was so weird. I mean, you know, future Trunks would have been kind of weird living in the past, but at least, you know, there's also another Trunks, so like you can kind of try to make it work. But Broly is just, I don't know. It's going to be weird. But either way, guys, let me know what you think, and let's continue this conversation in the comment section below.